So this last question comes from Edwin4362 on Twitter, uh, and he says, for those of you who lived in the city during high school, how did you decide to go to college in the city or away from the city? Y'all ready for Tanakara? Because Tanakara is coming out. So I grew up in Boston. A lot of people will say they're from Boston. Boston. <laughs> but they're from New Hampshire or... Maine, oh, or yeah, I've been been hours and they're like, I'm from Boston, oh what part, I'm from Salem, that's not Boston. I grew up in Boston, I went to a Boston public school, it was downtown in Boston, I worked downtown in Boston. Hey you guys, Karen grew up in Boston. <laughs> I grew up in Boston, yeah. which is a city, uh, and I <laughs> loved it. A real one. A real city. I know people in Chicago and in, York, in LA and New York are saying, nah, it is a real city, believe me. We're legit. <laughs> uh, we're legit. And I, so I grew up Weird. down. <laughs> All of us. Living my love. Okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. I grew up downtown in Boston. It's literal spinning distance from Fenway Park. So, okay. like, when I say I, I'm a city girl, I mean, and um, I went to school in Burlington, Vermont. It's a city, it's a city. A city. <laughs> Chicago and um, New York probably haven't even heard of it because it's not, it's not. Th there's more college students than anyone else and I think more cows and moose than, I'm kidding. Um, but it's, so it's the well, biggest city in Vermont. <laughs> And I walked in there and I was like, this is cute. This is, oh, they're, so, they're trying to be a city. That's so nice. Um, so for me, it was extremely like rural and I kind, I really liked that because it had enough like city life that I could like walk downtown and do stuff. And there were places I could go at like 10 o'clock at night if I needed food or I had to run out and get something. Whereas in an extremely rural area, you might have to drive like six miles before you see another person. Um, but for me, it was it was the boonies, and I <laughs> I really liked that about it. It was that it was this whole new experience for me, going someplace that didn't have a metro. <laughs> um, so I, I decided to do that because I mean partially because of the romanticism of like oh Thoreau went off to Walton and just wrote stuff, and I was like I'm gonna do that, but I did not. <laughs> um, and so like for me, it was a good idea, but for a lot of people, like I had a lot of friends in high school who, who decided to stay in the city because they were uncomfortable leaving and they're like, you're going to get attacked by a bear. And I'm like, I don't think so, but like, thanks for watching out. And um, so it's it's all about like what you feel comfortable with uh, more than anything else. Yeah, I did the, the almost the same. I grew up um, an hour outside of New York City in Connecticut and wanted to get as far away as home as possible. So I probably picked the northernmost college or university in the country. Um, maybe Michigan has some more northern ones. But anyway, it was in the absolute middle of nowhere in the woods in Maine, six hours north of here, roughly. Um, and it was, it was really cool because I didn't want to really be in that city environment where there, you know, was, was so on top of having the college, your college there, there's uh, so much else going around you. I kind of wanted to feel like I was in this town that was completely taken over by my college. And I almost feel like Burlington with, you know, Champlain and, and UVM yeah, right yeah. there. It it's, really is like, it's, it's a college city almost. If you go when there's no college kids around, like in the summer, it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I lived, I lived through really some weird. summers up in Maine and it, the whole town just empties out and it's actually really like awesomely cool because yeah. <laughs> it's like the streets are like the tumbleweeds will be going down <laughs> campus. Pretty much. Um, but I, I absolutely loved it. And I know people who did the exact opposite went from backwoods Maine to the city and they liked it too. Um, definitely, I think that's probably a bigger jump um, in my mind would be yeah. to go from somewhere rural to the city yeah. just because it, it's so different and there's so many systems and like, you yeah. know, figuring out the train and the public transportation is tough and just the overwhelming amount of people. Yeah. Um, I had people like come visit me who like grew up in super rural areas and they were like, they were hyper aware and I'm always hyper aware just kind of naturally like being in the city like growing up like I need to know what areas to avoid and I'm, I'm aware of my surroundings but not like, like that kind of thing where you're just 
very outwardly paranoid, and I had a lot of friends who did that immediately. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like if you're like growing up in the boonies and jumping into the city back into something that's sort of an automatic thing, like it sort of you hear horror stories about people in the city, and it's not that big a deal. No, right? I would say it's it could almost you know you have yeah. so you have such a big group of people and yeah. you know, around you that it could be more safe in yeah. certain circumstances, but. Um, it's a it's a big difference, and it's it's nice to know. Um, you know, I I never felt like being six hours away from home in the middle of the woods. I always knew that I had my home to go back to, or my my parents' house, I should say, um, to kind of go visit the you know the urban. The city will always be there. The rural areas will always be there for you. I think a lot of people. Um, when they think of this like going off to college thing, it's like this huge transition and you're leaving home and you'll never see like your parents again. And no, that's not how it is at all. Like I, I, after graduating from college, I went back and lived with my parents again for a year and I felt like I was a middle schooler again and it was terrible. But, um, <laughs> no offense, Kara. Um, I still live with my parents because friends are in Boston, as it's Yes, I, um, so, you know, those aspects of home and um, the unfamiliar are always going to be, you know, follow you wherever you go. So it's, that's not really, was a, a big, that wasn't a huge stress factor for me. It was um, mainly the campus. And, um, you know, you go outside of the University of Maine campus and it, it's completely, yeah. like, very weird. Um, you know, miles and miles between um, your neighbor's house and your neighbor. But any college campus is gonna be a campus. You know, it is It is truly like a safe space where you're gonna have a community of peers, like-minded with yeah. with yourself. So um, the, the surrounding area sometimes doesn't have some impact, sometimes it has a lot of impact, but you know, aspects of home are always there. I feel like the thing that really pushed me was that being in a city, you don't get a lot of stars. There's so much light pollution um, that we like see. Like I, I live on sort of the edge of Boston, and so there's there's you know some stars in the sky, but if you're downtown, there's nothing. And in New York, there's nothing. I went to Burlington, and my first time there, I saw a shooting star, and I was like, this is amazing. And that might not be a big push for a lot of people that come from the city to like nature. No, thank you. But like for me, that was. That was a big deal. Like I've been a skier for a while, and that was a huge. That was another big deal for me was that I wanted to be close to a ski area in college because I wanted to pursue that more and be able to do that. And again, seeing the stars was just groundbreaking for me. I was out in the boonies in the summer for an event, and I was like, I didn't know there were so many stars yeah. that existed. And I remember it's the first really time cool. you kind of see like the outline of the galaxy exactly. in the blue, and you're like, is it? That's, that, that, that's I there the whole time. astronomy was fake for <laughs> <Yeah>. years. <laughs> I think if you're a city kid that's worried about not having the same, you know, options and resources that are available to you in the city, if you go to a school that's in a college town or more rural, more suburban, um, colleges in 2018 have everything. everything. Yeah. They have absolutely everything that you could imagine. Cookie delivery services that run until four in the morning. Cookie? Cookies, yeah, yep. fresh baked cookies. Cookies, cookies delivered. Yep. What? Yep. Oh, yep. Everything. I mean, they have restaurants right on campus. There's restaurants around the town. I mean, this is an opportunity to find some awesome mom and pop like bakeries and pizza shops and all that stuff in these little towns that, you know, in the city, every other pizza shop is the best slice in the city, but here you can actually find the best slice in the city, that type of stuff. Um Obviously, my experience is, is a little different. I went from the suburbs to the city, um, but I do know for a fact that, you know, schools just have everything available to their students that they could possibly dream of. Um, but I think it, it goes both ways. You're, you're giving some things up and you're gaining a lot of new things um, in, in a new, new way. Did you ever feel like overwhelmed by like city schedule, like running errands yeah. and stuff and I think traffic? For me, I, it, having grown up in Massachusetts, I had been in and out of Boston, um, and I had family in New York. So New York was always overwhelming for me, whereas Boston was more my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think a lot of the time um, it was a little overwhelming for me to think about, you know, okay, well, I have to hop on the T and go here in order to get to this place that I need to go in order to get to this. And it was just 
a little overwhelming at times. And I think definitely things like that, like public transportation, if that's new to you, it is going to be scary because this huge metal tube is flying down the street and you're like, what the heck is going on? But um, I think that it just, it gets easier in time and you kind of get into your routine. And again, you have a lot of other people that are stepping onto this campus with you and they might be from Oklahoma or they might be from down the street, but they can help you either way. Um, so yeah, I mean, make friends with city folk and uh, and try to get their inside look on how to navigate and everything like that. But I think it's, it's a brief feeling of being overwhelmed and then more of a excitement and anticipation for what's to come. Yeah, I had a similar experience to you, but I didn't go to a city as <laughs> Um So I, my hometown is very rural. Uh, you have to drive like 10 minutes just to get to a supermarket. So being in that environment and then going to Burlington, this is great, I can walk everywhere. Yeah. Where I love Burlington because you were on this hill that was, okay, here's all the residential area. Okay. And then you slowly mm. walk down and you get to the city and then you get to a lake and it's more yeah. rural. You had pretty much those three environments of residential suburb type area, here's the city, and then if you want to go camping, jump on a boat and you're, you're ready to go. Yeah. And I love that because it was the opportunity that no longer do I have to drive 10 minutes to get anywhere, I can walk 10 minutes yeah. and I'm in any of those zones. Yeah. And I love that. It, but to kind of shoot myself in the own foot, I ended up living in Winooski for yep. three years. And Winooski is right outside of Burlington. It's and to walk from there. Burlington to campus for us, it was like a solid 15, 20 minute walk. And then if you wanted to go downtown, it was like another 10 minutes on top of that. I made that walk and it's rough. Uh, I've made that walk way too many times. Yeah, I, like to, yeah. I used to walk. Yeah, no, Unless you go to the city. I mean, still a lot of walking in the city, yeah. but I did a lot of just like, mm, gotta go to my friend's house yeah. and just walk. And the thing was that with going in, in Burlington, we didn't because it was kind of a city, they didn't have, um, they, they had cabs, but it wasn't like in New York or Boston where you just flag one down, it, you had to call them and we didn't want to call them. And oh, so this was like just a little to get a cab. Uber and Lyft. So it was like, we, if we went downtown for Ben and Jerry's, we were walking back up Mount Maine. <sighs> it is a, a very steep incline walking home. Going it's, down is fine. It's great. It's <laughs> beautiful. You get to see the lake, you get to see New York, and then coming back up, you're like, oh, oh. But you work off the ice cream. That's true. Very true. So um, think about the geographics, the topographical areas of where you're living. <laughs> get a topo map of your yeah. campus. Or just look down and be like, do I want to walk back up that? But you guys are lucky now because you have phones with Uber and Lyft and you can just easily be like, you I can't. don't feel like <laughs> you can't like your modern technology that. back in our day a couple years ago. <laughs> Those were big deals. And it was like, honestly, like sometimes you'd have to wait like 20 minutes for a Lyft. Even <laughs> honestly, even in the city of Boston, I used to, we used to call cabs and it would take 45 minutes yep. to get to my apartment in Southie. Yeah. And when I would want to get home, okay, show, you're like, that's, show up that's really, here. that's a yeah. tough ride from, from, you know, northeastern to southeast. That's you got to go down a lot of one-way streets, so that, that'll take you a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So uh, do what's best for you. Really. I mean, if you if you think I can't leave the city, it's not. I'm not going to be comfortable in nature of any sort. It's totally fine. I remember, I went to school in New York. And I told him I went to Burlington, Vermont. And he's like. <laughs> because that's too that's too much woods for me and I was like okay I I like New York I'm, I'm relatively comfortable in New York but I it's not my favorite place to go and it, for me that wasn't where I wanted to go to college and I was like that's fine like you do your thing and I do my thing and that's do what's right for you specifically right location is gonna land on you know differently on everybody's list of priorities yeah. it's it's but one aspect of school but if it's very important to you that's that's what's important to you and that's good to know. And that just goes back to the importance of the visit, the yeah. overnight stay. Absolutely. Meeting somebody, seeing the campus culture, maybe talking to a current yeah. student. Right. And if you do do a campus visit, one thing I would recommend to you as well, my mistake that I made at my first school, not Northeastern, 
was not exploring the surrounding area as well because you are going to want to get off campus if there is an option to do so unless you're out in the sticks yep. and you're six hours from anything but if you are in a city or you know a city like place yeah. um, that has stuff going on outside of campus you want to check that out as well yeah. um, not that you can't spend your four years just on campus grounds um, but you might want to explore a little well, yeah, and Karen mentioned the mountains. That was a huge thing yeah. for us. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. We love snow. Right. So if there's a ski snowboarders. Uh, and uh, the reason we moved to Winooski is because Colchester had the bowling alley. So yeah. now we're in the middle. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so. But it is something to think about because, you know, for me personally, the campus was beautiful. Everything seemed so perfect. I yeah. thought about all the things I'd be doing on campus and then I didn't, I neglected the outside of campus which yeah. was you know it was not what i was looking for yeah. um in a place to live so it's important to to do your research and, and take a look around at what's going on outside of campus as well yeah that's and and walk the streets yeah walk up mount main um, <laughs> as well as going down take that walk walk yeah. from the dorm to the class <laughs> yeah like, walk, walk around right. take a lap around the campus because yeah. that's something that you're gonna have to do Every day, right. and exactly. make sure that's something you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I walk from the recommend north to the walk from the north to the <laughs> north. It's so it's a pretty walk. I it's also nice. recommend visiting in the summer as well as the winter. Um, that's you're a going to school in northeast. Visit in the winter, and especially if you're from somewhere um, not, southern. Not north, yeah. yeah, if you're from so, like California, I had, <laughs> I had a friend from Texas. You always knew Texas was Texas because in October she would put on the park and be like, it's so cold. Guys were like, it's 55. I'm yeah. still wearing shorts. And the opposite applies <laughs> yep. because, you know, I, I'm a beach girl through and through. I love the sun, but I lived in the Caribbean for a month and it was the worst month of my life. So if you can't handle humidity, maybe don't go to a tropical region. <laughs> yep. yep. So, yeah, be, be sure you can do it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really important. That's more important, I feel like, than whether it's a city or not. <laughs> like, Where is the city? Are you physically yeah. uncomfortable for five months out of the year? Moscow Probably. or Miami? <laughs> <laughs>